Brexit, like Rome, wasn't built in a day. So while Theresa May studies the architect's blueprint for the disunited Kingdom of England, Wales, maybe Northern Ireland and probably not Scotland, the rest of Europe is planning some refurbishments for the European project. It's a kind of celebrity makeover for political nerds. Jean-Claude Juncker, President of the European Commission, has sketched out his vision for the future of Europe, showcasing it first to the European Parliament. Juncker's plan for the road ahead will then be presented to Europe's leaders at a summit on March the 9th. A little later in Rome, on the 25th of March, Europe's heads of state will discuss Juncker's post-Brexit roadmap at a special summit, celebrating 60 years since the signing of the Treaty of Rome. Before we go to Rome, uh, Mr. President, for the festivities. That is that what we want today will be something different as the Treaty of Rome. Because the Treaty of Rome was a customs union, was maybe the right answer in 57, but let's be honest, it's not the answer of the challenges we are facing today. You have written a very comprehensible white paper, and that's good, it's good to start a discussion. But having said that, our group is also disappointed because we, especially here in the Parliament, all of us, are elected to prepare the future of Europe. And that means getting into the concerns of Europe. And you know very well what they are. If you look to the great challenges of Europe, it's migration and security. It's solidarity or the lack of solidarity and the growing inequalities. You mentioned the social pillar. We very much welcome the European Commission's, and the ECR group very much welcomes the European Commission's white paper. We would like to see an EU that does less, but does it better. We would like to see an EU that concentrates more on the market, but also those countries that want to go further should be free to do so, so we have a more flexible EU. 60 years ago, on the 25th of March 1957, Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and West Germany signed the Treaty of Rome, setting in motion the world's most successful peace project. The treaty proposed the progressive reduction of customs duties and the establishment of a customs union, the creation of a single market for goods, labor, services and capital, the creation of common transport and agriculture policies, a common European social fund and the establishment of the European Commission. It was signed at the Palazzo the Conservatore on the Capitoline Hill. There was just one problem. The signatures were added to a blank text. Inside the cover sheets, there were no printed pages. A series of freak events culminated in the destruction of the text by cleaners. They mistook the drying pages as discarded rubbish. So the question, as Europe approaches the 60th anniversary celebrations is if the blind pages had to be written today, what would they say? Well, I think uh, social security, um, peace and disarmament, um, and uh, uh, cooperation in areas of mutual benefit. And finally, I would allow European citizens to vote on a much leaner but more fundamental EU treaty in popular votes in all member states if we are uh, afraid of losing these kind of referendums or popular votes, then apparently we don't have a convincing offer to the European citizens. I expect a, a European Union who stays united at the level of 27, who delivers for the citizens, uh, who organizes itself in a more streamlined, in a simpler, in a democratic, in a transparent way. And I expect the European Union to deliver exactly what citizens care about now, which is security and jobs. The majority of people are out there are really only concerned about can I put food on the table, can I pay my rent, can I educate my kids, to start looking at kind of lofty ideology of where the future of Europe lies. I think we see a very worrying trend, I suppose, where you do see the far right, it's very fragmented in Europe, and the idea that we are moving towards maybe, on the one hand, a very pro-European centralised governance and a convergence of economies and all of this harmonisation which is a red flag to a lot of member states and then you have the other ones who just want to get out. Le paure spingono gli uomini a chiudersi e quindi a pensare che è meglio stare in una casa propria che in una casa grande insieme a tanti uomini, ma è un errore, un gravissimo errore ottico. Dobbiamo invece stare in una casa più grande e difenderci insieme, altrimenti saremo travolti, saremo travolti, ma dobbiamo garantire anche una globalizzazione più equa, nella quale 
vengono difesi i diritti di tutti, soprattutto i diritti delle persone più deboli e più povere. If you discovered the mortgage documents you signed were actually blank, would a court recognize that a valid contract existed? Signing the blank pages of the Treaty of Rome and allowing the document to stand is more a matter of trust between the signatories than a matter of law. Today, in the year 2017, a united and integrated Europe in the form of the European Union is the answer to the main challenges that we are facing exactly as 60, 70 years ago the European integration was the main answer and the best answer to the challenge of the time which was lack of peace, lack of security. Exactly as we managed to overcome decades, centuries of war, of military conflicts in Europe through the European Union 60 years ago, exactly like that we can uh, manage and overcome the challenges which, which we are facing now together. The positive thing seems to be that our citizens are more positive towards the European project than the governments have been. It's quite interesting to recognize this. Like the money markets, law is validated by the credit we give it. The word credit comes from the Latin word for believe. We have to believe that the signature on the banknote will be honored. It has to have a deliverable. We test that deliverable when we buy food at the supermarket, clothes at the store. If we don't believe money has a certain value, then capital markets crash. The same is true for Europe. The main priority in the eyes of the people is that we deliver. They do not care so much how we are organizing ourselves, if the council and the parliament meet to negotiate at 7 o'clock in the morning or at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That's not what they care. They, they want to know that we're working in a transparent, honest and democratic way. And other than this, their main priority is that we deliver and this is what we have to focus on. There's all this kind of talk about, oh, we look after our youth and we'll invest heavily in social Europe. But the actual reality of that is they don't. It's all just whitewash and we don't see the fun to back that up when we talk about creating a social Europe. Where is social Europe gone? Because it really is gone. And that's why I think you see such a, a divergence of leadership roles coming out that nobody's taking one specific route to creating that social Europe which we all signed up for. Noi abbiamo bisogno di, di maggiore integrazione politica e di una più efficace governance economica e fiscale. La moneta unica è importante, ma la sola non basta. C'è bisogno di politiche fiscali comuni, di una vera governance economica e di una politica sociale che risolva i grandi problemi dei cittadini, a cominciare dal tema dell'eguaglianza e della lotta alla povertà. It's uh, not just what you put into the speeches of Jean-Claude Juncker, but you have to deliver. And if you do the opposite, if you organize the European Union in favor of the multinational corporations, the big banks, then people won't listen to you anymore. If you try to preach them value, it will be a very lonely priest, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker indeed. Do you have any confidence this is going to change anything in Europe? I have absolutely zero confidence uh, that this is going to change anything. In fact, I think it's a distraction from what the real issues are. It was little more than an intellectual exercise, considering that the majority of what's in that report was done prior to Brexit and prior to Trump. So now we're chartering unchartered waters, really, and navigating that. There's a huge lack of political leadership there. There's huge volatility. Nobody seems to know what's going to happen because of Brexit. The divorce proceedings are still on the way. And we can't possibly be talking about the future of the EU on this kind of vague, lofty notions that really mean nothing to the people. As the European Union celebrates 60 years since the signing of the Treaty of Rome, citizens, markets and demagogues are asking if they believe in the EU. The test is in the deliverables. Will 2017 mark a new era, the emergence of a stronger European Union, or will others borrow Theresa May's blueprint for chaos?